someone who shared their life story with you and you had the utmost respect for them? Well, Veronica and I have had the honor of meeting that such person. This is Cassandra Rookwood, our subject. Uh, Cassandra has been through a lot of obstacles in her quest to become self-sufficient. <coughs> She's also had a lot of struggles and disheartening circumstances. Excuse me. And through it all, the words of her grandmother, Lavetta Fraley, have brought her through these things. Uh, today we will tell you the story of Cassandra Rookwood, uh, about the glue that held her family together, which is Lavetta Fraley, and the influence of her grandmother, how this influence has motivated her to overcome all of these obstacles. Cassandra was born, this is Cassandra. Cassandra is like so this is Cassandra. I'm 16 right there with my two sisters and my auntie. Yes. Cassandra was born in Auburn, California, and she moved to Washington State from Auburn, California at the age of two years old. This, oh, this one. No, no. This is the flag, obviously, from where she was born. She moved to Washington State at the age of two. She attended Shining Mountain Elementary School, Bethel Middle School, and Bethel High School. Um, at the age of 14, Cassandra was forced to drop out of high school because her family, family <laughs> was experiencing a lot of challenging things. By the age of 15, Cassandra was actually working at Labor Ready. And as we all know, that is actually illegal, but Cassandra had to do what she had to do to get by. So that's what she did. At the age of 15, she also had her first department, which she got all on her own, which was located here in Tacoma, Washington. Uh, she began, she worked at Wendy's restaurant where she worked for three years. In 2003, Cassandra became <coughs> pregnant with her first and only beautiful daughter, Desiree. Would you like to tell us about this picture? Uh, that was she was about, I don't know, eight months old there. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah. yeah. And, She's um, cute, though. Yes, she is. <laughs> 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 She began working at Kmart, where she worked up until she had Desiree. Um, after she had a baby, she had to decide whether she wanted to get less money to take care of her and her child, or she wanted someone else in a daycare center um, excuse me, to raise her child and instill their beliefs on her so early in her life, so she chose to take her unemployment. She was on her unemployment for a year. After her unemployment was up, she got on public assistance so that she was able to care for Desiree, feed her, clothe her, all of these things. And she stayed on public assistance for two years. When this was over, Cassandra came to the realization, if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> so this led Cassandra to take a work position she wouldn't normally take as a cocktail waitress at O'Gallagher's Bar and Grill in 2006. She was forced to deal with a lot of things she would rather not deal with. Um, she had to deal with people who were constantly intoxicated. She had to deal with sexual harassment and all those types of things which were a bit too much for her. So she decided it was probably time to make some, cha some changes and she took some time off. <coughs> During this time, she had a hard time, you know, focusing on what was important as when, you know, most people you're not working, not doing anything, usually have a few issues with that. But she decided uh, she needed to figure out what she needed to do because at times she was feeling like she was doing nothing at all and that there was nothing she could do. This is when Cassandra relied on the information that was given to her by her grandmother to see her through her trials and to decide to lead herself and her daughter toward a better future. Now Cassandra, oh, did you want to tell us about this picture? That's my grandmother, the first time she's seen my daughter. In the last time. This is the first, this is a picture of the first and last time Cassandra's grandmother ever <coughs> saw her daughter. Uh, now Cassandra attends Clover Park here in the GED program. In a few weeks she will actually complete the program and she will go on to the health coordinator program here as well. Okay, at this part of the speech um, I think that it's uh, important to let you know that Cassandra had a lot of obstacles in her life and the only thing that drove her through all of those obstacles was the fact that she had a strong grandmother. 
her grandmother taught her very good values and prepared her for any obstacle that uh, life would give, you know, throw at her. In a conversation with Cassandra, I asked her where she found the strength to go through all the situations in her life. And her answer was, my grandmother was my strength. She said the thing that she remembers the most are the things that her grandmother used to say. She had these sayings that uh, she would say to Cassandra all the time. And one of them was, shh, you know you're my favorite. But she would tell everybody that. You know, she would tell all of her grandchildren that. But because she didn't want any of them to feel left out or any less love than the other one, she'd tell them all, hey, shh. You know, you're my favorite. <laughs> Another thing <laughs> that we examined uh, was the fact that LaVita also told Cassandra that ladies don't curse. They shouldn't curse. And whenever they would, she had a nice hand that was ready to, whop, you know, backhand her. So it was pretty funny when she told me that. <coughs> LaVita was born in 1941 in a town named Polk County near Rich Mountain, Arkansas. The picture of Arkansas. Where? There somewhere. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. There, there she helped her father tend to horses. She is a fraternal twin. She has a twin brother named Lloyd Fraley. LaVita, Cassandra's mother, was raised strictly by her dad. And that was due to the fact that her mother passed while giving birth to her twin brother and herself. Cassandra told me that LaVita was strong. She owned a Chevron gas station. She picked cotton. And she raised black stallions. Her favorite black stallion was a stallion named Bo. That's her picking cotton. That's her cotton field. And there's the black stallion. <coughs> Cassandra stated that LaVita had six kids. Sharon, which is Cassandra's mom, Susie, a deceased aunt, Jimmy, her uncle, Bill, her brother who passed away, and Tara, <coughs> her auntie, and also Wanda, which is the youngest sister. Cassandra told me stories of her grandmother teaching her the value of hard work by allowing her to work on different landscaping jobs with her. Cassandra told me a story of how, uh, I asked her what was one of the moments in her life that she has a hard time forgetting, and she says, well, one day my mom had came and got me, and my well, grandmother had came and got me, and she said to that we were going to do landscaping jobs. Well, they ended up fixing mobile homes. Now, anybody that knows, fixing those type of homes are not easy, okay? And, and just the fact that it was a woman who was working with all these men to do these jobs, it took me, it took me for a little. If that's not strength, you guys, I don't know what is. You know, I'm... She said the actual experience of it all reminded her about the stories of the olden days that her grandmother would tell her, where they did back-breaking work, you know, followed by a hard-earned meal, okay? She, Cassandra told me that after they did the work that day at the, you know, fixing the mobile homes, they then went to a restaurant to sit down and have something to eat. And she told me that the experience was so significant to her because I guess they were, you know, they weren't the richest people, but they were hungry. And she said that another couple, is that yeah, another couple thought we were kind of homeless or something, and they end up paying for our food. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, I thought that that was really good because for me, it would be difficult to accept that type of help because I'm kind of stubborn and sometimes I'm just I'm prideful. But with Cassandra, her grandmother, her, her grandmother showed her that pride is not something that benefits you in life. It just isn't. Um. Cassandra said that her grandmother had died from smoking cigarettes. And this was actually Cassandra's motivation for quitting. Do you smoke now, Cassandra? Yeah. <laughs> Cassandra stated to me that her main motivation in school is also to make her grandmother proud. Since her grandmother was the glue that held her family together, her dying has really affected Cassandra. She had hopes of her daughter experiencing the healing power of LaVita firsthand. <coughs> now Cassandra will have to pick up the baton and become the new adhesive that keeps her family together. LaVita's death is always hard for Cassandra, but when it gets hard to deal with, Cassandra just remembers the things that she liked most about her grandmother. And 